should we understand high places in the Bible? First, what were they? It's known that high places were set apart for religious practices and contained an altar for sacrifices. Though perhaps originally built on hilltops, there was diversity in their location, likely due to convenience and cultural significance. They could be built on hills and hillsides, in towns, in city gates, and even in ravines and valleys. Many, if not most, high places probably included other structures like outbuildings and walls. The Bible speaks of them as being built and destroyed. With the birth of Israel as a nation and the giving of the Mosaic Law, the practice of building altars and worshipping at high places was outlawed in Deuteronomy 12. Israel's worship was to be different than Canaanite worship and eventually be limited to a place where God would choose to put his name. During the conquest of the Promised Land, before a place for God's name was chosen, which presumably meant a place to put the sanctuary, Joshua built a high place on Mount Ebal. At some point during Joshua's life, though, the permanent sanctuary site was chosen, Shiloh. The tabernacle was pitched there and permanent religious structures were built up around it. The next period, that of the Judges, was a time of ever-growing religious apostasy. By the end of the book, we see the descendants of Moses ministering before idols and the tribes of Israel as largely descended into moral spiritual chaos. The lifetime of the last judge, the prophet and priest Samuel, saw much change, not the least of which was the destruction of the sanctuary precinct in Shiloh, though the tent tabernacle, altar, and Ark of the Covenant escaped destruction. Samuel was undeniably a man of God, yet he was a habitual user of the high places in Israel. He routinely sacrificed on them. After the Temple of Solomon was built in Jerusalem, the Bible establishes it became the new place of God's name. The authors of Kings and Chronicles began to judge the kings of Israel based on whether they attempted to remove the high places. So then, culturally, though there was a temple, a place of God's name, the people generally continued to use the high places. What we see in the Bible demonstrates that Israelite high places were seen as acceptable to God under the conditions that the practices conform to the worship of God and that they were being used in a time before an official place of the name had been chosen. This would explain why in Samuel's life, the high places were not criticized. Shiloh had been destroyed and apparently a new place had not yet been chosen. Beyond this, Deuteronomy 12 does provide exceptions to the rule of sacrificing only at the official sanctuary. Animals were allowed to be slaughtered for consumption at any village, town, or city. This provision allowed for practical meat consumption and celebration without the burden to travel to the official sanctuary. Thanks for watching. Click the playlist on screen now to watch more spotlights. And if you want to read the full article, click the link in the description. You can always go to BibleDiscoveryTV.com for more videos, articles, and resources.